Hey, 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 welcome to a new episode of Superhero Deep Dive. I have a listener request this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let me get my normal disclaimers out. Um, I have actually a checklist, so let me go through my checklist. My phone is on silent. Um, The dogs are being quiet, so let's see if that stays. Um, Also, if you want, you can catch me every... Tuesday and Thursday throughout the day on Outworld Fleet Radio. Their website is www.un-con-inventional.com forward slash radio. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter and Instagram under Super Deep Dive, and I use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. My DMs are always open. You can email me directly at B, the number four, it all, so B4 it all at yahoo.com. And you can catch me on youtube under superhero deep dive if you do please like subscribe comment all that good stuff it would mean a lot i'm really trying to grow the channel i'm trying a couple things out and it's it's been good so far um i've got new banner graphics i guess or thumbnails for the photo or for the videos and They've been actually getting good responses. Um, I have been told to split up my audio into a couple different episodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record them and I'm going to try that out, see how it works, see the feedback I get. But as far as any podcast goes, if you're listening to me wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts or on Outward Fleet Radio, it will just be one long format like normal. So there won't be any change for you there. Okay. But also, the information is pulled from different sources across the internet and may or may not be completely complete, but they do give a really good insight on the current superhero. So, with that being said, let's talk about Howard the Duck. Yes, is he a hero? Yeah, I guess so. Does he belong here in Superhero Deep Dive? Absolutely, because my friend requested it and as as i do with all my friends i try to follow up on those requests um i think i've only had to turn down one request i've gotten so far and that was just simply because he's in a current storyline so things were changing as like and i just couldn't do it but anyway howard the duck his real name is howard duckson now his first appearance in comics is actually when he is abruptly abducted from his home planet by an unseen force and randomly dropped into the Florida Everglades by the demon lord Thog the Netherspawn. While he's there, he meets the Man-Thing, who had already been attacked by Korok of Catharta, and the three of them are confronted by warriors of the Congress of Realities. He then meets Dakum the Enchanter, and Dakum banishes the warriors and transport Howard, Man-Thing, and Cork to his castle where they are joined by Jennifer Kale, who has the only legitimate name here. Everything else seems like it was made up. Alright, they then travel to the realm of Theria and destroy Thog and the, or they destroy Thog the Nether Spawn. Howard then accidentally falls off the interdimensional stepping stones that the group were traveling on and materializes in Cleveland, Ohio. Because if there's one place you definitely want to land, it's Cleveland, right? Better Cleveland than Alabama. Better Alabama than anywhere else, I guess. I don't know. I I don't know. Um, But while he's in Cleveland, he battles Garko the Manfrog. Howard is arrested at this time for disturbing the peace and is mistaken for a mutant during the during the strip search. He is actually released though because the police fear he has mutant abilities. Howard also briefly encan- encounters and kills a vampiric cow named Bessie the Hell Cow. Bessie the Hell Cow also needs to be a video game character in like Well, there was a cow si- cow level in Diablo, right? Why, what, they're all Bessie the Hell Cows. You just didn't know this. I'm making this up right now as we speak. <laughs> but anyways, Howard makes friends with an artist model named Beverly Switzer and a bizarre series of encounters in follow. Uh, he battles Pro Rata, the cosmic accountant, and then meets Spider-Man at the end of the battle. He battles Turnip Man and Kidney Lady, 
who would become a semi-recurring character over the years, and then learns the fictional martial art of Quack Fu. Howard then encounters the Winky Men. Oh, I don't know about this. This, did, I don't know if this just took a turn. Um, but he's actually the sleepwalking alter ego of Beverly's artist friend Paul Same, who would become a series regular and lady, later become a, the pair's roommate. Howard also briefly becomes a wrestler. Because that's what you do, right? Alright. Beverly and Howard hit the road, seeking shelter in a gothic mansion where they battle a girl named Patsy and her giant animated-to-life gingerbread man. They eventually end up in New York City where Howard is nominated for President of the United States by the All Night Party, and he later battles the Band of the Bland alongside the Defenders. A doctored photo scandal leads them to Canada, where he defeats a supervillain, the Beaver, who causes the scandal. The Beaver falls to his death in a battle with Howard. Howard then suffers a nervous breakdown and flees Bev to the situation on a bus. Uh, unfortunately, the bus's pal passengers are all believers in various weird cults and try to interest Howard in them. His seatmates are Wenda Wester and the Kidney Lady. A woman who believes that the soul of a person lives in their kidneys and attempts to stop anything she sees as anti-kidney health. Wow. After the bus crashes, Howard and Winda are sent to a mental institution where they belong. There, there he meets Damien Hellstrom and is briefly possessed by Hellstrom's demonic soul becoming the new son of Satan because everyone is afraid of a satanic duck. Like, try it. Go outside. Find a duck. They're, they're scary and they come running at you. Alright, anyways. Beverly and Paul manage to get them back both to Cleveland. Later, while on the SS Damned, a cruise ship returning from scenic Bagmum, Howard and Beverly are taken captive by Lester Verde. Verde had known Beverly in college and had a crush on her and had assumed the identity of the supervillain Dr. Bong. <laughs> Dr. Bong. I can't read that. I can't read it without laughing. It's Dr. Bong. Who illegally marries Beverly against her will and transforms Howard into a human. After escaping back to New York and being restored to his natural form, Howard is hired as a dishwasher by Beverly's uncle, Lee Switzer. Switzler. Howard, Howard is later reunited with Dakam the Enchanter, the Man Thing, Quirk, and Jennifer Kale, and they all battle the demon Bizkjo. I I don't know how to pronounce that. It's B Z Z K apostrophe J O H. Bizkjo. I don't know. Quirk pilots the ship, the Epoch Weasel, and drops Howard back off at Cleveland before he and their allies fly away. Howard finally meets up with the cruise ship that rescued Paul and Winda from the Dr. Bong and finds that Paul and Winda have befriended socialite Iris Raritan. Howard is later kidnapped by the ringmaster and in his circus of crime, Winda is abandoned by Paul and Iris and Paul is shot and left in a coma. After defeating the circus of crime, Howard is plagued by pessimistic dreams and goes his way alone just as he had in the series beginning. So he comes full circle, I guess. All right. Now, writer Bill Mantlow, beginning with issue number 30, returned the series to its former status quo, bringing Beverly back into the picture and having her divorce Dr. Bong. Howard's creator, Steve Gerber, who left the series after issue 27, originally intended for Beverly and Bong's marriage to be lasting and for Beverly to be written out of the series from that point on. Howard and Beverly's friend Paul, who had ended up in a coma after he had previously been shot by the ringmaster, awakens from his coma and is released from the hospital. Beverly's Uncle Lee brings everyone back to Cleveland and employs Howard as a cab driver. While Paul, back to being a somnibulist, I don't know what that is, after, after his release from the hospital, becomes Wenda's boyfriend. Howard dons a suit of iron duck armor made by Claude Starkowitz, a man who has delusions of being related to Tony Stark. Well, of course, that's his, that's the Jewish cousin, right? 
uh, Starkowitz? Isn't that a Jewish name? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Um, he's delu he's got delusions of being related to Tony Stark and dreams of being the personal armorer to Iron Man and battles Dr. Bong in the final issue of the original 70s Howard the Duck series. Howard later encounters Dracula and even once returns to Duck World. At the end of the nine issue magazine series, Howard leaves Beverly at her request and is later offered a genetically constructed female duck mate whom he does not take to. On later occasions, She-Hulk accidentally pulls Howard through a cosmic wormhole along with theoretical phys physicist Brent Wilcox, and they are able to prevent other universe from crowding out Earth-616. During this time, Howard meets a character called the Critic, travels to a dimension known as the Baloneyverse, um, and again battles a group called the Band of the Bland. Whom, had whom he had previously battled with the Defenders. In an encounter with Peter Parker and Ben Riley, the then current Spider-Man, um, Howard gets a rematch with the Circus of Crime and the Circus is defeated. During the fight, Howard and Beverly get stuck in a warehouse full of anthropomorph anthropomorphic ducks, briefly meeting the Savage Dragon and Destroyer Duck. Parker and Riley then leave the warehouse believing that they have the correct versions of Howard and Beverly with them. However, in the Savage Dragon Destroyer Duck companion story that takes place simultaneously um, and was written by Gerber, it is explained that the version of Howard and Beverly that left their warehouse with Peter and Riley are simply clones taken by mistake and that the real Howard and Beverly actually left the scene with Savage Dragon and Destroyer Duck. So yeah there's that um that just seems weird um but the sorceress jennifer kale in a weekly attempt to return <laughs> there's she attempts it weekly um to it to a return howard to his home world inadvertently teleports devil dinosaur and moon boy into her new york apartment the disoriented dinosaur attempts to eat howard but spits him out when shot with john blaze's hellfire gun Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy then rampage through the city before being subdued by Ghost Rider, who was Daniel Ketch at the time, not Johnny Blaze. Um, Howard then says that he relates to the pair being trapped in a world they never made before wandering off. Howard returns to his business as a private eye, working in the same building as She-Hulk in Brooklyn. One of his few clients is Jonathan Richards, who hires Howard to retrieve a necklace stolen by the Black Cat. With the help of Tara Tam, his new friend and assistant, Howard manages to recover the necklace. However, on its way... Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, with a... Okay. However, on his way to give it back to Richards, he finds himself kidnapped by the Collector and allied with the Guardians of the Galaxy to escape the villain, who is attempting to add Howard to his collection of rare space objects and entities. Upon returning to Earth, Howard is robbed by May Parker, Spider-Man's aunt and later re-encounters the Ringmaster, who reveals to have brainwashed the elderly into committing robberies. Because they'd be perfect for it, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Stop them and break their hip? Like, that's not cool. Alright. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's see here. After recovering the necklace for a third time, Howard is approached by Richards in the middle of his fight against the Ringmaster, and Richards reveals himself to be Talos the Untamed, who reveals that the necklace was part of a marginally powerful item known as the Abundant Glove. Not the Infinity Gauntlet, but the Abundant Glove. Um, with help from Doctor Strange, Howard and Tara locate the final piece of the Abundant Glove, but are unable to put it back together when Talos grabs it and proceeds to use it to wreak havoc on the city. Talos is confronted by numerous heroes while Howard and Tara take cover. Howard is able to point out that Tara, who was revealed to possess shape-shifting power similar to that of a scroll, could help him defeat Talos. Tara used her powers to impersonate Scroll Emperor, Emperor Clert, the Super Scroll, distracting Talos long enough for Howard to snatch the Abundant Glove from his hand. Talos is later apprehended by the Fantastic Four and everything then returns to normal. Afterwards, 
With the help of new arrival Gwenpool, Howard prevented Hydra from infecting the world with a deadly virus. He also has a crossover event, event with the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Howard the Duck is shown to be living in the She-Hulk's apartment building when Patsy Walker moved out. So, I wonder if there's going to be more crossovers. I wonder if Howard the Duck may actually make an appearance in the She-Hulk series, since in the comics they're in the same building and they live in the same building. What do you guys think of his history? This is kind of crazy, right? Like, there's so much here. Um, but let me know. Like I said, you can... You can reach me on Twitter and Instagram under Super Deep Dive. Uh, you always use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. Um, you can comment, like, subscribe on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive. I really appreciate growing that channel. I do have giveaways planned if I hit 500 subscribers. So let's let's do it to it. Um, also, you can email me directly at b the number four it all at yahoo.com. So b four it all at yahoo.com. But yeah. Yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, it's pretty interesting, right? Okay, so I'm going to call it for part one on this. And this is a YouTube-only kind of thing. Um, I am actually going to split this up into two parts. So next time, which will happen in about two days, I will cover their powers, fun facts, and power expansions. We'll see where we can what we can do with this character. But like I said, let me know what you guys think. Thank you as always. Be blessed. Be happy. Be safe. Be smart. And if you're not smart, don't get caught. I will see you in a couple days. Bye-bye, guys.